Hello and welcome to this latest edition of Bulls on Parade Talk. I am your host, Joshua Sines, and today I want to talk to you guys about maturity and how it plays a big part in the draft process. Now, this was brought to my attention because of an article that I read on USA Today. And it is very simple. There's one thing that in this draft that really stood out to my mind that I completely overlooked for some for, for some reason, even though it was something I think was brought up a while ago. But I looked at this draft class and the prospects that are in it in the age group. There are 98 underclassmen. A record 98 underclassmen. That's mind-blowing. Here's why. Because a lot of these guys that are that are juniors, underclassmen, that are, that are, they're, they're about like um, 20, 19, 20 year olds. They're not even 21 yet, some of these guys. And you have to wonder about maturity, especially with these kids. Technically, they're still kids. And, um, in an, and like I said, in this article on USA Today, in USA Today, um, basically, the title of this article reads, quote, Immaturity of Underclassmen, a Concern for Some GMs. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Uh, nothing else to say there, but it's a bigger concern, especially nowadays, especially with how social, social media plays big. More than anything, Twitter. It's the one reason, it's, it's one of the reasons why... Um, it's one of the reasons why I have, why when Twitter was first coming out and it was starting to get big with all of these, um, with all of these athletes and all these um, Hollywood superstars and celebrities and such. That is why I was so hesitant, so skeptical about Twitter. That's why I don't have one right now. But, you know, with the way that uh, this channel is going, I might consider getting getting one later, but my point is some of these kids, some of these young players that are on Twitter, they'll just put stuff on there and all of a sudden it, get, it gets out everywhere. And I'll, I'll take it a step further. Why do you think the Houston Texans started following Johnny Manziel on Twitter? It's to keep an eye on him. It's to see what he posts on there. And I'll, and I'll, go, even, I'll go a step further by deep digging into this article. Um, the Minnesota Vikings, their general manager, Rick Spielman, told USA Today that they've already red flagged eight of these prospects. Why? Because of Twitter. Because of the stuff that they put on there. There were guys, he says that there were guys on Twitter's, there were guys on their Twitter accounts just posted some ridiculous, just some ridiculous things. He didn't say any names. But, you know, he, they looked at about 60 of these 98 prospects. There were eight guys that they immediately found that they, that they red flagged due to, their Twitter, due to their Twitter feeds. Here's an example. Some of the stuff was like, uh, hey, I'm going out and partying with the guys. Or saying that, or, or, or this really boggled me. They put on their Twitter account, they ad admitting that they took a drug. On Twitter? It's like um, it's it's one of the things that I always look at um, that I always uh, admire a guy like um, when they go like don't press sand you know Herm Edwards that, that, for some reason the the name it completely escaped me Herm Edwards although I'm not big on ESPN people Herm Edwards is a very respectable coach in my in my eyes. And the one thing that I remember listening to him saying at a rookie symposium was this. There are cameras watching you. Everything you do becomes news. You know, with the way social media is nowadays, they'll put that on ESPN. They'll put that stuff on the news. They'll put that in papers, in articles, in columns. Your Twitter feed, if you're, if you're an athlete, especially in the NFL, it's all over the place. That's how they get most of their news now. By Twitter, by social media. Now nothing is hidden. 
Especially if you put that kind of ridiculous stuff on there. And you know, and uh, the article finishes by saying Rick Spielman, I'm sorry, um, Kevin Colbert, the Pittsburgh Steelers GM, he was quoted in saying this. He was quoted in saying this. Even though it's the most talented group I've ever seen, I'm also worried it's probably the most immature group. And we have to be prepared for more player development type programs and maybe enhancing your player development for us to get the most out of these young players. We're very cautiously optimistic about their emotional and physical readiness. Now, why do you think, now why do you think they said something like that? They don't want to have to deal with another Ryan Leaf in the league. And we all saw what happened with him. Completely immature. He came out of college way too early. And, and, and he just couldn't take it. When he started struggling, he couldn't take it. That's the bottom line. And I'll go and I'll go and and I mentioned Johnny Manziel. I'll go further deeper into that. Why do you think the Houston Texans started following Johnny Manziel on Twitter? It's to keep an eye on him. It's, it's called scouting because nowadays people, these kids will post anything on, on Twitter. And you have to be careful because it can tell you a lot. It can tell you a lot about the kind of person, the kind of person they are. It can, it can, it can really identify, you know, the kind of personality they have, you know, are they mature enough? Are they going to, are they going to say are they going to act stupid? Are they going to say stupid things on Twitter? Because th let's face it. Let's face it. In Twitter, <sighs> this is just one of these things that, you know, there are a lot of people, you know, when, when the news broke out that people were following um, Johnny Manziel, the, the Texans were following Johnny Manziel on Twitter. Oh, it's because we're immediately going to draft him. Are you kidding me? People are freaking ridiculous. And I'm so glad that this article broke out so I can finally say something about this. The reason that the Houston Texans are following Johnny Manziel on Twitter is because they're keeping an eye on him. They're making sure because you gotta because although they're following him because they're gonna they're taking a look at him. It's called scouting. It's not because we're gonna take him. It's because he's one of these guys that has to be kept an eye on because you have to make sure that his maturity is something you look at in this process considering his history with Twitter. Or do you not remember that? Are you, or do you choose to ignore that also? Bunch of fanboys out there. Immaturity is a big concern in this, in this draft. And I must, that's, that's why in my last episode, I said I was scared, particularly of Johnny Manziel. Not because of his talent. Not just because of his, of his, um, not, just, just, not just because of his recklessness in terms of his play on the field, but his recklessness off the field. That's all I said when it comes to Johnny Manziel and now, and now, um, Rick Spielman at the Combine today, when he was told USA Today, hey, we already put red flags on eight of these guys for the stuff that they put on Twitter. Because it tells you, it tells you quite a bit about who they are. Some of these guys will just put anything on there. And it's ridiculous. They don't think about the... These kids don't think about the long-term effect that it could have on their personal life, on their professional life. That is why I myself, all I have is Facebook. The only, the only part, of, the only, only piece of social media I have right now is Facebook, and I am very careful. I do my best to be very careful about what I put on there. That's why I don't curse. That's why I don't swear. It's why I don't put any kind of inflammatory remarks of any kind on my Facebook account. You know, people look, people look at that. And you know, when you're interviewing for a job, and this is the, this is the one thing that I was told in college, when I, when I was in college, especially when Facebook was starting to boom, 
was starting to get big. It was around when I got when I when I when I um, when I entered the University of Houston, and ironically, or coincidentally, I should say, that was when I first got Facebook. Was when I got to U of H, you know, because everyone else was doing it, and I thought it was a nice way to connect with you know my friends, people I haven't seen in a while, people I haven't uh, talked to in a while. I thought it was a good way to reconnect with some people, and it was. It really was. Um, but, you know, as, you know, social media started booming, uh, a lot of um, companies that were hiring these employees, these, um, these companies, when they look at you, they look at your, tw at, at your social media accounts. They do their homework on you. They look at your Facebook, they look at your Twitter, they look at your LinkedIn, they looked at everything. They they do they do they do their homework on the guy on the people that they are that 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 are that are that, are, that they are looking at for hire. Because it basically tells you the kind of person they are, the kind of character that they display. It's the one reason why a lot of my um, couple friends of mine have haven't been able to find a job because you know they post pictures of themselves you know at par at, at parties smoking drinking all this good stuff. People look at that as a red flag. Companies look at that as a red flag. And when you're going to an NF and, and when you're going to and when you're trying to enter the NFL, when you're getting paid a lot of money to play football. You know, how do you think an immature kid is going to handle tons of money being thrown right at him? How do you think he's going to handle that? And how do you think he's going to handle, if he's really immature, how do you think he's going to handle failure? That's the bigger question. How do you think he's going to handle failure and success, especially with the money coming in, with the big contract? It's the one thing that you really have to pay attention to, especially now, because history has shown, history has shown that maturity plays a big part in drafting, for example, a franchise quarterback. Look at Ryan Leaf. I don't need to go farther into that. I don't want to have to go farther into that. But Ryan Leaf is the example. Probably the example, the the reason why when why underclassmen are looked at are placed under a microscope big time, especially if they're a hyped up prospect, just like Johnny Manziel. While he may be the so-called "quote unquote" story of this draft, he's also the guy that has to be looked at big time. Not because of his play on the field. I'm not denying anything that he has done on the field. But you know, you have to look at it now. To his credit, I have to give Johnny Manziel credit because in this offseason, I have, I have not seen any stories of him posting stuff on Twitter. Only thing I've heard about him like um, a couple minutes ago before I... A couple of minutes ago, I found, I read an article saying that he reached out to Tom Brady during his workout. Good for him. Good for him. Now, can he translate that to something positive? Now, you got to remember, you got to remember this. Tom Brady is the guy that called Johnny Manziel a turd after, you know, after all, everything that had gone on this past, this, this last offseason, before the last college, this past college football season. This is the same guy that called Johnny Manziel a turd. Now, has he learned from that? We will see. We'll see. But all I'm saying is, got to give credit to, got to give credit where credit is due. I have not seen any anything on on Twitter feeds. I haven't heard any reports. Haven't heard any um. Any hot Twitter feeds about uh, referring to Johnny Manziel and any of his uh, any kind of uh, off-field antics so far? All I've heard from him is nothing but he's been working out with this with his coach. 
with his QB coach preparing for the combine and his and his pro day, his individual pro day. So, <clears throat> all I'm saying is, you know, especially with uh, 98 under 98 underclassmen, you gotta look at maturity, especially with seeing with especially seeing with what it's taught us in the past. So. <clears throat> That, uh, that just about wraps things up here on this edition of Bulls on Parade Talk. Uh, thank you all so very much for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed, please leave a like on this YouTube video. I'd appreciate it very much. Uh, in the comments section below, tell me what you guys think about, about maturity. Is it a concern for you? Is it something that you would look at big time in regards to these prospects? Is it something that would... Um, the, uh, is it something that, for example... You determine whether you would draft him or not. Do you ignore it? Do you think you can get past it? Do you think there's a p potential Ryan Leaf story in this draft? Tell me what you guys think in the comments section. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, for more Houston Texans coverage provided by yours truly, uh, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll be here covering all the latest regarding your Houston Texans all year long. Uh, and finally... Uh, please be sure to check out my uh, Bulls on Parade Talk podcast on TalkShoe.com if you haven't already. The full link to that podcast will be in the description below this video for those that are watching on YouTube. And also, to those that are listening on the podcast, the full link to this YouTube video will be on this episode's info section on the podcast website. Again, if you have any concerns or questions regarding anything, whether it's uh, Texans, YouTube, or podcast related, go ahead and send me a message. I'll do my best to reply as soon as I can. As always, this is your host, Joshua Signs, signing off.